Imagine a world ruled by titans, colossal creatures with jaws so powerful they could crush bones in a single bite. We're not talking about myths or movie monsters. We're talking about the Tyrannosaurids, one of the deadliest and most iconic dinosaur families in history. From the plains of the late Jurassic to the forests and swamps of the Cretaceous, these predators reigned without opposition. They spread across North America, Asia, and even parts of Europe, dominating the top of the food chain for millions of years. But here's the big question. What made these dinosaurs the undisputed kings of their time? Was it their immense strength, their lethal bite, or was there something more in their biology that turned them into the ultimate predators? Get ready, because today we're going to unravel the legacy of the Tyrannosaurids, exploring their evolution, their deadly skills, and the secrets that made them unstoppable. Let's begin. To understand how the Tyrannosaurids became the imposing predators of the Cretaceous, we must first go back in time to the Jurassic. During this era, the earliest members of this family weren't the titans with heavy footsteps that we all know, but smaller, more agile creatures with unique features. One of the first known representatives is Proceratosaurus, a dinosaur that lived during the Middle Jurassic. Although its name means lizard before Ceratosaurus, it didn't have much in common with this other predator. Instead, it shared characteristics with later Tyrannosaurids, such as a robust skull structure and the presence of bony crests on its head, which could have been used for visual communication or recognition among individuals of the same species. Another fascinating ancestor is Guanlong, a Tyrannosauroid that lived in what is now China about 160 million years ago. Unlike its gigantic descendants, this carnivore was no longer than three meters long, but its anatomy reveals key traits in the evolution of Tyrannosaurids. It had an impressive bony crest atop its skull, likely used for display during mating season. It was also much more agile than the colossal Cretaceous predators, relying on speed and cunning to hunt small prey in the Jurassic forests. As time went on and the Jurassic period came to a close, these small predators began to evolve. Scientists believe the key to their success was a combination of an increasingly powerful bite and the adaptation of their hind legs for more efficient locomotion. Over millions of years, these gradual changes allowed the Tyrannosaurids to become the dominant predators we recognize from the Cretaceous. How did they go from small, agile hunters to the titans of the Cretaceous? The answer lies in natural selection and changing environmental conditions. During the Jurassic and early Cretaceous, ecosystems were dominated by other large predators, such as allosaurs and carcharodontosaurs. However, as these lineages disappeared or dwindled in number, the Tyrannosaurids began to occupy the vacant ecological niches, growing in size and perfecting their hunting skills. Fossils also reveal that over the course of their evolution, Tyrannosaurids developed surprising adaptations. Their skulls became more robust and their jaws more powerful, allowing them to exert a bite capable of crushing bones. Their acute sense of smell and binocular vision gave them an advantage in hunting enabling them to detect prey from long distances with lethal precision. In this first act, we've seen how the Tyrannosaurids began their evolutionary journey from relatively small creatures to the formidable predators of the Cretaceous. But the story doesn't end here. Now we're going to dive into the era where these giants reached their peak and became the undisputed rulers of their world. Get ready to meet the true Titans. If the early Tyrannosaurids were small and agile by the Cretaceous, the story completely changed. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. We have set the goal of reaching 10,000 subscribers before the first half of this year, and with your support, we can achieve it. Join this community, and let's make this channel grow together. It was the Age of Giants, a time when Tyrannosaurids reigned as the ultimate super predators. And when we talk about giants, there is one name that stands out above all, and that is Tyrannosaurus Rex. Who hasn't heard of Tyrannosaurus rex? The name of this dinosaur resonates in popular culture, and for good reasons. With its more than 12 meters in length and a weight that could reach 9 tons, Tyrannosaurus rex is, without a doubt, one of the largest predators that ever lived. But its dominance wasn't just due to its massive size, there were other factors that made it the king of its ecosystem. The most famous characteristic of Tyrannosaurus rex is undoubtedly its bite. With more than six tons of force in its jaws, Tyrannosaurus rex had the ability to crush bones with astonishing ease, something few creatures could match. 
This ability not only made it a lethal hunter, but also a first-rate meat rending machine. Imagine the pressure it exerted with each bite, more than enough to break the bones of its prey as if they were cookies. Moreover, its powerful bite wasn't its only ally. The structure of its teeth allowed it to tear and crush meat with pinpoint precision. This combination of strength and design made it an efficient and lethal predator. While its imposing size already gave it an advantage over many of its competitors, the anatomy of its head is what truly made it an exceptional hunter. Tyrannosaurus Rex's eyes were oriented forward, giving it binocular vision similar to modern birds of prey. This allowed it to judge distances with incredible precision, making prey capture easier by perfectly gauging how far away it was. It didn't just have a brutal bite, it also had the ability to calculate the exact moment to strike. The debate over whether Tyrannosaurus rex was an active hunter or a scavenger has been present in paleontology for years. While some studies suggest it didn't miss an opportunity to feed on carrion, most experts agree that its anatomy made it more suited for active hunting. Its agility, intelligence, and powerful jaws didn't just allow it to tear fresh meat, they also allowed it to bring down large prey like hadrosaurids and ceratopsians. It's not hard to imagine it lurking in the darkness of the forests with its sharp vision and powerful hind legs leaping onto its prey to unleash its fierce bite. However, nature always has surprises, and if Tyrannosaurus rex had come across dead prey, it wouldn't have hesitated to take advantage of it. Adapting to a mixed diet between active hunting and scavenging would have made it one of the most successful predators in history. But as is often the case, not all great predators were limited to North America. In Asia, another giant shared the predator throne of the dinosaurs, Tarbosaurus bait R. At first glance, Tarbosaurus might seem almost like a twin of Tyrannosaurus rex, but upon closer inspection, the differences begin to emerge. Although Tarbosaurus batar wasn't much smaller than Tyrannosaurus rex, reaching an impressive 12 meters in length, it was more slender and agile, suggesting that it was better adapted for hunting in a forested environment or dense vegetation. This type of habitat would require the predator to be able to move quickly through the underbrush, and Tarbosaurus was built for that. Its more streamlined and probably lighter body would have allowed it to move with superior agility compared to its American relative. The skull of Tarbosaurus was narrower and more elongated, which could have been an evolutionary adaptation to improve its bite precision. This modification might have helped it capture smaller, faster prey, such as some small herbivorous dinosaurs. While Tyrannosaurus rex might have preferred larger prey, Tarbosaurus could have hunted in a more tactical manner, stalking and ambushing its victims with surgical precision. The idea of a confrontation between Tyrannosaurus rex and Tarbosaurus batar is fascinating, but difficult to resolve. Both shared many similarities in terms of size and power, but their differences in agility and hunting strategies made each one more effective in its own environment. Could Tyrannosaurus rex, with its massive size and destructive bite, have dominated Tarbosaurus? Or would Tarbosaurus, with its agility and specialization, have been the victor in a close combat scenario in dense environments? It's a question that remains unanswered, but without a doubt, both dinosaurs were formidable predators that ruled their respective worlds with authority. Albertosaurus sarcophagus is one of the most fascinating and lesser known Tyrannosaurids, but its story is full of surprises that distinguish it from other great hunters of the Cretaceous. Although not as imposing as the fearsome Tyrannosaurus rex, Albertosaurus had its own set of skills and strategies that made it a formidable hunter in its time. Albertosaurus measured approximately eight meters long about two meters shorter than Tyrannosaurus rex. Its weight, which was around two tons, was significantly lower than that of its famous relative, giving it more agility and speed. Its slender body and long hind legs likely allowed it to move quickly, giving it an advantage in hunting agile prey or pursuing groups of herbivores. But what truly sets this Tyrannosaur apart isn't just its size, but a possible group hunting strategy something that challenges the traditional idea of Tyrannosaurs as solitary hunters. The key to this theory lies in fossils found in the Dinosaur Provincial Park quarries in Alberta, Canada. In this area, remains of multiple Albertosaurus individuals have been discovered together, leading paleontologists to consider the possibility that these dinosaurs not only shared the same territory, but might have lived and hunted in packs. The fact that several Albertosaurus individuals shared the same space suggests they may have cooperated to hunt larger prey, such as hadrosaurids and ceratopsians, much bigger animals 
than themselves. Group hunting, as we know today, is an effective strategy for bringing down large prey that would be difficult to capture alone. Much like modern wolves or lionesses, Albertosaurus may have organized into packs to surround and bring down prey far larger than them. Fossil evidence also suggests that, like hyenas, these dinosaurs may have alternated between hunting and scavenging, allowing them to survive in tougher environments where fresh prey wasn't always easy to come by. This ability to adapt to different feeding strategies would have given them a significant advantage in an environment full of competitors. Although Albertosaurus didn't reach the size of its relative Tyrannosaurus rex, its intelligence and ability to organize in packs made it just as lethal a predator. Moreover, its smaller size allowed it to explore more agile and flexible hunting strategies, making it an even more efficient hunter in its ecological niche. If there is one figure that has sparked debate and controversy in the world of paleontology, it is Nanotyrannus. This small Tyrannosaurid, about six meters long and weighing less than a ton, has been at the center of one of the most fascinating discussions about dinosaur classification. Is Nanotyrannus an independent species or simply a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex? The answer remains unclear, but researchers continue to study its remains with great detail. The first fossils of Nanotyrannus were discovered in the 1940s, and since then, paleontologists have been divided on whether it is a new species or simply a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. The main difference observed between Nanotyrannus and an adult Tyrannosaurus rex lies in its smaller size and some skull features, such as the jaw handle, which is believed to be narrower in juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex individuals. Some paleontologists defend the idea that Nanotyrannus is a separate species based on differences in bone structure, skull shape, and tooth proportions. They argue that its smaller size and different morphology are enough to consider it a distinct species. However, other researchers have suggested that Nanotyrannus is simply a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex that, being in a growth stage, had not yet reached the imposing size of an adult. According to this theory, the differences observed in the skull could be attributed to the changes that occur as a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex grows and matures, something that also happens in many modern species. The fact that Nanotyrannus fossils are found alongside juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex remains has led many scientists to question the validity of this species. Stratigraphy and fossil dating evidence have shown that many of the Nanotyrannus fossils belong to juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex individuals, reinforcing the theory that we are not dealing with a distinct species. If it were proven that Nanotyrannus is indeed a separate species, it would change our understanding of Tyrannosaurid diversity, suggesting there was a greater variety of these giants than initially thought. However, if the fossils actually correspond to juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex individuals, this would only confirm what many paleontologists already suspected, that Tyrannosaurus rex had a juvenile phase very different from the adult phase, making it even more diverse and fascinating. While many Tyrannosaurids dominated the vast plains of the Cretaceous, there was a special group that lived at the northern extremes, adapting to an environment that few dinosaurs could endure. We're talking about the Tyrannosaurids of the prehistoric Arctic, surprising creatures that survived in conditions so extreme that we can't help but wonder, how did they do it? One of the most fascinating Tyrannosaurids from these frozen regions was Nanuxaurus hoglundi, a specimen that represented the peak of adaptation to the harshest climates on Earth. Imagine a place where the sun disappears for months, the cold is relentless, and snow covers the landscape nearly year-round. That was the prehistoric Arctic 70 million years ago, a hostile environment where Nanuxaurus roamed what is now Alaska. But what's most fascinating about this Tyrannosaur wasn't just its location, but the surprising adaptations that allowed it to survive in such an extreme climate. Unlike its gigantic relatives, like Tyrannosaurus rex, Nanuxaurus was much smaller. Measuring about six meters in length and weighing close to a ton, its smaller size likely helped it conserve energy in an environment where food wasn't always abundant. The extreme cold represented one of its biggest challenges. Although it's not certain whether its body was covered in feathers or thicker skin, some paleontologists suggest that, like its dromaeosaurid relatives, it might have developed some form of insulation that protected it from the low temperatures. Surviving in the Arctic meant adapting to a changing diet. During the long, dark winters, Nanuxaurus likely hunted small prey adapted to the cold, 
such as herbivores that migrated through the region or fed on the sparse forests. In the short summers when the sun shone relentlessly, it took advantage of the abundance of life to feed and accumulate reserves for the next winter. In this frozen world, only the most adapted thrived, and Nanoxaurus was certainly one of them. In the final moments of the reign of the Tyrannosaurs, the planet experienced a catastrophe of unimaginable proportions, an event that would forever change the course of Earth's history. Approximately 66 million years ago, a 10-kilometer diameter asteroid collided with what we now know as the Yucatan Peninsula, creating the Chicxulub Crater. This event, known as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction, sealed the fate of the dinosaurs, including the majestic Tyrannosaurs. But how exactly did this impact affect the giants of the Cretaceous? The Chicxulub impact released an unimaginable amount of energy, equivalent to 10,000 times the most powerful nuclear bombs. Within seconds, it unleashed a wave of scorching heat that caused massive fires around the planet. The flames ravaged forests, while the dust and debris thrown into space darkened the sky for months, blocking sunlight and plunging Earth into a deep darkness. This global winter didn't just affect herbivorous dinosaurs, but also predators, who watched their food sources disappear almost instantly. The Tyrannosaurs, like Tyrannosaurus rex, who were at the top of the food chain, were not immune to this crisis. The extreme cold, lack of food, and constant darkness quickly wiped out most species. Although we have no direct evidence of the extinction of every Tyrannosaur, what we do know is that these giants did not survive the consequences of the impact. Fossil studies show that after this great extinction, dinosaur diversity plummeted irreversibly and the Tyrannosaurs were part of this collapse. As herbivores fell, carnivores like Tyrannosaurus rex also suffered the consequences of their prey's disappearance. Why did the Tyrannosaurs specifically disappear? The explanation lies in their size and their dependence on large prey. These dinosaurs required vast amounts of food to survive, but in an environment where sunlight was minimal and plants could not grow, their larger prey quickly became extinct. In this scenario, the Tyrannosaurs, with their enormous size and resource needs, found themselves trapped in a fatal cycle of scarcity and hunger. Thus, the last great king of the Cretaceous, Tyrannosaurus rex, like its relatives, went extinct in the darkness of the prehistoric winter. Despite their disappearance, the legacy of the Tyrannosaurs did not fade entirely. The extinction of these giants opened the doors to a new era, one in which mammals began to dominate the Earth. However, the Tyrannosaurs left an indelible mark, a connection that endures to this day. Modern birds. Yes, you heard that right. Birds are the direct descendants of dinosaurs, specifically a group of theropod dinosaurs, which include species like Velociraptor and, curiously, the Tyrannosaurs. Although giants like Tyrannosaurus rex no longer walk the Earth, some of their living traits persist in the birds we see today. Paleontologists have identified that many Tyrannosaur traits, such as foot claws, bone structure, and skull shape, are present in birds. These adaptations of ancient predators have been preserved through evolution, allowing the descendants of dinosaurs to survive to this day in a completely different form. Who would have thought that the great hunters of the past would today be small birds filling the sky? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to support it with a like, subscribe, and turn on the little bell so you don't miss out on new content. Thanks for being part of this amazing community. See you soon in the next video.